Greetings once again from El Paso, Texas. Aslan Hajavani alongside Irish O'Fell for this edition of War Chant TV. We're out front the media hotel here for the Sun Bowl. It kicks off tomorrow, noon local time, 2 p.m. Eastern on CBS. Uh, we just got done speaking with Odell Hagens and Herm Edwards, both head coaches from the teams that will be in the game tomorrow. But the obviously the huge news of the morning, the afternoon, probably the rest of the day, just absolutely shocking. Uh, but in the most positive way possible, the return of Tamori and Terry and uh, Marvin Wilson. I guess both those guys coming back. Let's we'll, we'll get to how what it means for the future. But just is one of them more surprising than the other? Or just were you as shocked as I was in a pleasant way, of course, Ira? Yeah, no, I think Marvin Wilson was more surprising to me because we had been hearing that Tamari and, uh, was maybe leaning that way, especially because you, know, you looked at the draft board and you looked at what was out there, and there's so many receivers in this class. You, you kind of wondered if it made sense for Tamari to leave early, uh, especially at that position with this offense. There, it seemed like there were more reasons for him to come back. Marvin Wilson, I mean, I think most people thought he was a first-round pick. Uh, you know, you, you think about the physical toll it takes on your body to play defensive tackle. Not, it, not like running backs, but still, you only have so many miles on your body. Um, and the fact that he's done so much, much already at the college level, it just seemed almost inconceivable that he would come back. And uh, it's huge. I mean, to me, the, but the combination of the two of them says so much about, you know, where this program might be going and, and the excitement around the program. What could be the – I mean, it, I'm just – it's amazing that like, Marvin Wilson would come back. You, it's crazy. Adlon's just sitting there. We were in a workroom. He's just sitting there staring into space trying to reconcile what has just happened. No, I think it says a couple things. I think Marvin Wilson, when he came here – I remember when he signed with Florida State and the, Tim Brewster was the recruiting coordinator who really brought him out of Houston. And he all he talked about that day was about Marvin Wilson's mother and how what, what a strong force she is in his life and how important education was. And – I bet you we haven't talked to Marvin yet, but I bet you that's a big part of it. He's also been such a good leader and, and team guy. No matter what's happened, Odell shared the story today at the press conference about him after they went and played at Boston College and Marvin couldn't play in that game because he had hand surgery. And a lot of people on social media and fans were saying that Marvin maybe had checked out because Willie, Ta Willie Tiger had just gotten fired and uh, he wasn't going to play these last three games because he wanted to get ready for the NFL. But when the team got back from Boston College and they're at the, pulling into the Doe Campbell Stadium, there's Marvin Wilson in the parking lot with his hand bandaged up from just having surgery, cheering on the team. He was so excited for them to come back after win. I mean, that just speaks so much about what he is and how he cares about this team. But it also says, I think, that you know he believes in, Mar uh, in Mike Norvell. And I, I would say that Odell Hagens probably gets a ton of credit for Marvin Wilson, just like Ron Dugans probably gets a lot of credit for Tamari and Terry. But also, they wouldn't do it if they didn't also seem to like what they see in Mike Norvell. You know, we keep we heard the term playmaker used a lot at Mike Norvell at his press conference, even on uh, signing day when he talked about what he's looking for. Tamori and Terry obviously fits that sort of mold. I mean, I would imagine this is – that might have had to have been one of the, the bigger recruiting pitches that Norvell has done. I mean, besides the prep kids he's gone after, is, is it keep Terry around? Well, you know, I thought Kendall Bryles' comments – I agree with you, but I also thought Kendall Bryles' comments when we talked to him earlier this week in the video, you can find it up on the site – is he talked about how much Tamarian has grown th through the course of the season. And when you say that, basically you're, you're saying that earlier this season he was not playing very well and he was not being a complete football player. And it was kind of a backhanded compliment that now he's becoming what he needs to be. You know, from what I've heard, and I, you know, I wasn't part of the conversations, but from what I heard about the conversations with Mike Norvell and Tamari and Terry, it wasn't a begging, hey, we need you, please come back. We'll do anything you want. We'll build the offense around you. I think back to Back in your day as a student, when you were helping us out at War Chant, when uh, Fred Rouse and Jeff Bowden, Jeff Bowden recruited Fred Rouse, <laughs> Freddie P, uh, they they like they sat down and showed him how they were going to use him in the offense, and basically kind of like we're going to build things around you, Fred Rouse, because you're so important to us. This wasn't that kind of case, even though Tamari and Terry's had over a thousand yards receiving this year, caught a hundred passes in his career. This was. You've got a chance to come back, play in this offense, but you've got to you've got to get better in all these areas. I think Mike Norvell, just like he was direct when he first met with the team and in these one-on-one -on -one interviews, I think he was very direct about Tamari, and you've got to step up, not just on the field, but in the, in the classroom and everywhere to become the guy you can be. And I think he maybe presented the the vision of what he thinks Tamari and Terry could be as a Florida State receiver in this system if he's doing everything the right way. Um, but I don't think this was a – a begging and pleading effort. I think Tamarian sees that he needs to get better, which you have to give Tamarian a lot of credit for realizing, hey, I'm not what I need to be yet. What's it say about a guy like Mike Norvell showing up in two weeks and not having to use that pitch, to not be the guy like, hey, man, I look at this roster. I really, really need you to stay. But instead of being like, hey, if you want to stay, I'd love you to stay, but I need this from you. 
I think it's a smart play too. You know, I think it comes across as, as confidence and, and, and it sets the tone. Uh, you know, again, I, we don't know how the season is going to go. We don't know how Mike Norvell's tenure is going to go, but I think that's the right move. I think if you, if you kind of recruit to Marion Terry, if you beg him to stay, then it sets the course of what your expectations are going to be. How hard is he going to work a month from now, two months from now in, in off season conditioning or in spring practice, if he's not feeling it that day, in the back of his mind, he remembers that you needed him. You were desperate to have him. So I think it sets, it's, it sends the right message. I think it's the right play. And I think Tamari and Terry and Marvin Wilson, as smart guys, realize that this is a guy that's confident. He doesn't, he's, not, he's not pleading with us. He, he thinks we can do great things, but, but with him, not for him. And so I think it's a, it's a, it's a smart play. Um, but it also speaks to, as you said, I mean, it's, it's not setting himself up for failure by you know, having to re-recruit kids that have already been on campus. 10 wins, Orange Bowl next year now? <laughs> I mean, how can you not be excited? I mean, seriously. Yeah. I mean, it's fair to, to take a wait and see approach, but I, you know, I'm impressed by the staff he's put together, how quickly he put it together. Uh, these moves are huge. Um, the fact that, uh, you know, some of these players that you've talked to seem to be already feeling the excitement. And I think what's so important about Tamari and Terry and Marvin Wilson is not just their production, but I think the message it sends to those other players, because I, as we talked about the other day, it's not like everybody on this team is 100% sold on Mike Norvell. Some of these guys who came for Jimbo or came for Willie uh, are going to take a wait and see approach. But when they hear that their defensive leader, the best player on the team, and their best, most uh, athletic playmaker on offense are both buying in, you got to think that's going to carry a lot of weight. Cam, you're up. <laughs> Come back, man. We got we got spot for you out here, man. If so. you just signed it in pencil, they can uh, you can always erase it. Uh, I think I might have you join us on the podcast again, uh, Ira. Uh, also, uh, what else is on, on warchant.com? You're going to be working on a column, I imagine, after all this kind of news coalescing around Mike Norvell and the team. Yeah, I was actually going to write a column about uh, how quickly he assembled the staff and how well that has gone and just some of the things we're hearing about uh, Mike Norvell behind the scenes and, and just kind of how much he's, how active he's been, uh, how hard he's worked. And, you know, those things sound like basic things. Everybody works hard. Every, every college football coach works hard and works uh, diligently. But even people in that industry have been really impressed by him so far. Uh, and you're starting to see the results, again, with the coaching staff, but then also these guys staying. Um, so I'll have that column. Uh, we'll also have uh, more coverage today. Uh, later today, they've got a fan event uh, at El Paso downtown where the, the marching chiefs are going to be there. They're in town. Uh, so we're going to go cover that, kind of get some of the fan experience. Maybe I'll eat another steak. Okay. And uh, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll wrap up our time here in El Paso with the game tomorrow. It's a... Uh, the game is a little bit of an afterthought, which is kind of strange yeah. because of everything that's gone on. But it's still, I think, it's been a really good week for Florida State. I'm catching a lot of heat for going for a, uh, you know, only a 24-ounce steak. I'm catching a lot of heat on online from people for catching a for a 24-ounce steak. So I'm, I'm, I'm taking names down. I know who you all are. <laughs> Get off good, my case. It's a good thing there wasn't a, you know, a 40-ounce steak. The people right. would be giving us crap for. Good grief. All right, yeah, let's go ahead and check that out. For Ira Maslow, thanks for watching. Check out Warchant.com for the latest. Use the promo code Warchant30 for 30 free days of access to the ultimate Semmel Sports Source.